Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I am joined, as always, by my fellow reader, Claire. Hello, everyone. I am Claire. I moderate the historical fiction on Facebook and also as the page turns here in the library. And today we have a very special episode, one of our favorites. It is time for Stack, Stack of Shame. Shame. So for those of you who don't get as excited about this as we do, or who may not have joined us for this episode in the past, uh, Stack of Shame is an episode where Claire and I talk about the, the shameful <laughs> length of our to-be-read lists, our TBRs, um, and we pick a few from that list that we're like especially ashamed that we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> we actually have so many on our to be read list that this year we had to establish criteria for for the stack of shame. It's bad. It so is bad. We both track our reading on Goodreads. Um, it just I am so goldfishy that I would yeah. never remember what I have read or what I want to read otherwise without some kind of assistance. Oh yeah. Um, and when I looked at my TBR, um, there are 235 books on my list. Yeah. I had 157, but that's only because I prune mine periodically, which I don't know if you do. I don't, but I feel like I probably should because what are the odds that I'm actually going to read those 235 books? Right. I actually have gone through mine and looked at some and going, why? Right. Where did I even get this recommendation? Yeah. Right. Off it goes. Yeah, so maybe I need to devote a rainy Saturday afternoon oh, to yeah. that at some point. It's very satisfying. Almost as good as decluttering the house. Mm, I'm not good at that either. Mm, yeah, me either. So. I'm a cluttery person. Uh, so today we have each picked five books from our TBR, and we narrowed it to books that we put on our list in about the last year or so. Right. yeah. And I think all of mine were also released in 2021. Most of mine were. I had one that edged in from January of okay. 2022. That's okay. like my most recent mm -hmm. shameful. Yeah. You know. Because a book that's come out last week, like, it is not shameful that we haven't gotten there yet. Right. Yes. But a book that came out a year and a half ago that we were like, oh, I want to read this book. Yeah. A little shameful. A little shameful. <laughs> So, Claire, do you want to kick us off with one of your books? Oh, sure. All right. So, this one is particularly shameful because many in my to-be-read list I have purchased, which adds an additional layer of shame. <laughs> um, so, this is The Lincoln Highway. I have not yet read anything by Amor Towles. I've heard mixed reviews. They're always long, which... You know, even as a librarian, I'm like, ooh, that's a big chunk of time. Um, it's historical, which, mm -hmm. you know, as most people know, I love. Uh, to add, you know, more shame, my future, my daughter's future father-in-law, every time I visit, asks me if I've read it yet. And I have to say, <laughs> no. And he's like, didn't you buy that? Yeah, well, yeah. So... <laughs> This one, I believe, is about two orphans that take, in 1954, um, go from Nebraska to New York City. So I also love a good road trip. So mm -hmm. hopefully one day I will eventually read this and not have bought this. But, you know, there's always donating to the Friends bookstore. Which, that's true. Yeah, I do that. But So that's my first one, is Amor Towels. And it kind of frights me because I know you and some other people I know did not love the gentleman in moscow i did not love it yeah i, I did not so. and this one is is not on my list yes <laughs> well but our when we so that was a book we discussed for pints and pros and our discussion was very divided on it there were right. people who loved that book yeah so, go figure you you know. maybe one day i'll read it and i'll tell you all about it there you go okay Give me the cliff's notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, my first one is going to be 
The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. And uh, I believe I actually discussed this book as one of the books that I was looking forward to in I 2021. Did. Yeah. Um, I remember that cover because yeah, I thought it was beautiful. really pretty. Yeah. Um, so this is a sort of fairy tale retelling, uh, folktale retelling. Um, it is the story of Anger Boda, who is Loki's wife in Norse mythology. Okay. Um, and so I think I, this came out after I had read Circe by Madeline Miller, which I love, love, loved. Um, so this is, I think, kind of the same deal, retelling female character in mythology who is not typically like a main character in her own right. Um, and it's like a, are you going to accept your fate or fight against it? kind of book. So all of those things are like, yes. Yes. Yes for Kirstra. I think one of our staff Just members sits. actually sits. had that on. Michael his, did. Michael yeah, had it, it on was his, his best, best book from last year. Mm -hmm. So I, I see promise there. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. I just haven't read it yet. <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of promise. Yes. And this is one that Kirstra read. <laughs> Which I was mad because she usurped me, and maybe that's why it's been, l no. l you know, lounging in my pile. Um, but crying in H Mart. Um, my daughter actually read this and mm -hmm. loved it. And as most people know, my daughter and I are both foodies. Mm -hmm. She far more gourmet than I, but you know, we both love food. So once again, I bought it from Book of the Month Club, <laughs> who probably loves me. So. Mm -hmm. People I know have read this mm -hmm. book, love this book. It's probably the most popular memoir or one of them of 2021. Yeah, it's um, right up there for sure. And I love a good memoir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the mother and daughter talk about it's a relationship that yeah. bonded over food. Yeah. What is not to like about that? You know, so the story of this one is she's actually a rock musician. Mm -hmm. She's in what? Japanese, Japanese breakfast. breakfast. And which I've never heard Japanese breakfast, but I digress. But <laughs> mid-20s, and I believe her mother gets cancer, mm -hmm. and then this is kind of a story of how she comes to it's terms a grief with memoir. that. A grief memoir. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to be in the right mood to read this anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, but it's really good, and it's so little. Yeah. I and think I once you get there, you're going to like it. Lost my mother in my 20s, mm -hmm. so I have a feeling this this could okay. be a good read for me. Sure. Um, very cathar cathartic. Cathartic. There's a word. There's a vocab word. There's a vocab word. <laughs> yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, all right. So my next one is going to be "The Chosen and the Beautiful" by Ni Vo, um, and this one is another retelling, but it's a classic retelling. It's The Great Gatsby. I was going to say The Beautiful and the Damned, because that's what that reminds me mm. of. It's almost got the same cadence to sure. it. Sure. So The Chosen and the Beautiful okay. is a retelling of The Great Gatsby, where Jordan, the main character, is a woman. She is uh, Vietnamese and adopted into an American family. Mm -hmm. uh, and she is queer. And there's magic. So, I mean, count you in. Count me in. Um, it, it's a debut. Okay. Yeah, I love a debut. Um, and people freaking loved this book. Um, okay. There are a lot of people. So I'm not a huge fan of The Great Gatsby. Um, and there are a lot of people who in their reviews are like, why would you read The Great Gatsby when you could read this one instead? More interesting, has magic, has interesting characters. Um, you know, it's interesting. There's been several. I've had one on my list that was kind of like a black family set mm -hmm. in North Carolina that was also a retelling of The Great Gatsby. Huh. Can't think of the name of it right now, but I will. Okay. I even was like trying to push it on my book club because then I have an excuse to read. Sure. You know. But yeah, I liked his writing. I particularly liked his short stories. Mm -hmm. but. Well, and I'm not a short story person yeah. either. So, eh. but someday, someday, someday I'll be taking this one home with me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's next? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do one just for fun that I haven't bought people. Oh, they're falling on the floor here. 
And I, the sad thing is, I have Stack a bag with even more. <laughs> this one is my newest one, and it was a January 2022, I believe it was published. So, relatively mm-hmm. recent. Um, still enough for me to feel a twinge of shame because, um, A, the premise was intriguing for What's this the one. Title? The title is The School for Good Mothers by Jasmine Chan. Um, it was a Jenna's book club pick. We all know how I feel about Jenna. I'm just, um, I'm not even, do I need to even say more? Um, the premise, when you're a mother, you have guilt issues, okay? Mm-hmm. I don't care what kind of mother you are. So, mother of three, I definitely have guilt <laughs> issues. So, she is, I believe, Chinese, right? Mm-hmm. Chinese immigrant, um, has a bad day, incident on the playground, and she is put into like a government imposed program. So it is a lot of, it sounds to me like it was a page turner. It sounds like it would make an awesome book club pick. Uh, just a lot to discuss and unpack in here on mm-hmm. what constitutes a good mother. How does society handle said things? Um, there's just a lot to go. Are you reading this one? I now? just finished you it. You dead dog, you kister. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my rage is just exploding Pardon here. Us briefly. <laughs> um, I just finished it last week, and I cannot wait to talk about it with someone. So I have to read it. You quickly. have to read it. Yeah. So that we can talk about it because you're right. I mean, I think it is, I, I thought it was excellent mm-hmm. when I was reading it, but I was like, just imagining having conversations with people about it. It's like the perfect book club book. Yeah. Well, some of the people that actually wrote about this, Liz Moore, who uh, mm-hmm. I did Long, Long Bright, Bright River. River for my book club. Mm-hmm. This book is like nothing I've read before. Tightly plotted, deeply moving novel that mm-hmm. offers profound insights into the state of contemporary motherhood mm-hmm. within a country that offers very little in the way of societal support for parents. I found myself moved to tears by its conclusions. That's the that's pretty powerful stuff right yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, all right, I'm jealous. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to like bump it up the pile and and read it. Maybe we can both talk about it. Maybe that would can, be so much fun. That would. We should do a book. joint book. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. You're all right. On. Yeah. And if we can find somebody else, maybe we could even do a spoiler special on it. What? <laughs> all right. Okay. So filing that away. Um, but yes, so good. It sounds like a Cassie book, too. It does, very much. Yeah. All right. My next one is Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, uh, which may also look familiar because this is another one that I talked about as my looking forward to it in 2021. (laughs) Looked forward to it so much, I never bothered to read it. (laughs) Um, But I have read and discussed Swimming Lessons by the same author, which I really liked. Oh, I think I read Um, that too. Yeah, it's um, contemporary literary fiction. This one is about a pair of 51-year-old twins, Jeannie and Julius, who live with their mother um, in a tiny little cottage. And they are um, very isolated, largely self-sufficient and then their mother dies. Oh. And they are suddenly sort of forced to contend with the wider world. Um, there's lots of family secrets I am oh. given to understand. We know how Claire likes a family secret. Oh, Claire does <laughs> love a good family secret. Um, so this is one that I was really looking forward to. The cover is really cool. It's kind of um, beautiful, but in a slightly unsettling way. Yeah. Unsettled unsettling well there you go um but yeah so someday i will take this home and read it um i just haven't yet (laughs) there's always tomorrow bless all right okay Uh, oh dear (laughs) another one hits the ground (laughs) so this one is called the family Hmm. by naomi krapitsky it is a mafia book. It Sounds is like it. Historical fiction. Mm-hmm. Once again, I bought it. Layer of shame. Jenna's pick. Another layer of shame. Um, historical fiction. 
mafia. Who doesn't like a good mafia story when you, you know? live in the state of New York? There you go. Family saga, yes, please. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe this is about two friends whose relations in the family and the mafia drive a wedge between them. So mm. they're, they're... Kind long, of Romeo and Juliet. Yes, one... I don't know. I think it's actually two two women's friends oh, okay. since birth share huh. everything, and then one fateful night, their loyalty to each other and the family will be tested. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Um, so a sweeping saga, American dream, old New York, the wounds of prior generations. Yeah. What's the time period? Nineteen fifties. Okay. So nice. Yeah. Sounds good. It does. Let's hope I, I read it and <laughs> tell you all about it. So. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, all right. So then we've got Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe, uh, subtitled The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Sackler Dynasty, um, they own the company that makes OxyContin. Um, and largely deemed to be sort of the one of the driving factors behind the current opioid crisis in our country. Uh, so this is the same author that wrote Say Nothing, which was the book about the troubles in Ireland and, and the loved disappeared that people. And I loved it. It was yeah. really good narrative nonfiction. Um, so very excited about this one. I still want to read it. Um, I'm, I don't know a lot about this topic, um, but it seems timely, mm -hmm. and someday, someday will be the time that yes. I read this timely book. <laughs> Someone I know was just reading that book, and I can't think of who. It might have been my daughter's future father-in-law, mm -hmm. because he's was, a big reader. Yeah, and it was really well regarded. Um, yeah. He actually has a new book that just came out uh, called Rogues. Oh. That's all about, like people behaving badly in history. Um, so I, I really like this author. I like his writing style. It's, um, it's tough finding sometimes a nonfiction author who is able to bring kind of dry subject matter to life without the resulting book being dry. Yes. And he does that really well. Good to know. So, yeah. So Empire it's not a painful... <laughs> I see what you did treat, there. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Claire, you silly person. We bring the puns. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to have to dive to the floor. Uh oh. Sorry. <laughs> We're so professional here. The Paris Bookseller by Carrie Mahar. Um, this one, historical fiction, again. Mm -hmm. This was the description, a love letter to books, bookstores, and book letter book lovers everywhere. So in other words, it was written for me, yeah, personally. Yeah. Um, the bookstore is called Shakespeare and Company. It's set in 1919 Paris, frequented by the writers of the Lost Generation, like mm -hmm. Ernest Hemingway. Um, and it's kind of the story of Ulysses by James Joyce. It was a banned book, and the, and hmm. the owner of this bookstore named Sylvia... Um, decides to publish it herself. Hmm. So this decision has major implications for her personally and also for the bookstore. So mm -hmm. I kind of like that time period. I've I've read a little bit more Hemingway this year. So mm -hmm. and the bookstore was mentioned. Um, oh, interesting. When because what we read for book club was his memoirs of Paris, movable feast. Yes, a yes. movable feast. So, so yeah, this one kind of intrigued me. The description, so I thought I'd give it a go. Picked it up, used, and there it sits. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one, I have actually taken home with me, and I still haven't managed to read it. It is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is historical fiction set in medieval China, mm. um, 1345, when China is under Mongolian rule. Um, so we have this family. They have their fortunes told. Um, the eighth son receives a fate of greatness. And the second daughter, who is, you know smart and like on top of everything she receives a fate of nothingness so the family is like well how's that gonna work 
um, and they don't know what's going on. And then war comes through their village. Um, the children are orphaned. Uh, the eighth son actually also dies. And the second daughter, who is left trying to figure out what to do with herself, decides to take his name oh. and pretend to be a boy and takes herself off to um, a monastery and to enter as like a, a dedicant. Um, so it's kind of a Mulan story. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe it is. I don't know if it's actually based on historical happenings or if it is just set in an actual historical time period that okay. I'm not sure. Um, but it sounds great. Yeah. It sounds really good. It does sound really good. I took it home with me. Yeah. I didn't get to it. I think I would even <laughs> try to read that one. Yeah. 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 So she who became the sun. Destiny comes to those who dare. <laughs> All right. So. So we have a couple bonus rounds. Yes. Oh, good. My bonus rounds didn't fall. <laughs> so. I'm going to start with the one that you read. The, mm -hmm. Since you read it, I and we have to talk about books on book break. I have used that as an excuse as to why I haven't read it. There you go. But it's called We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinsker. Mm-hmm. Pin Pinsker. Pinsker. Yes, mm -hmm. I have trouble with that. Um, I just thought the premise of this was really fascinating. And one of the things that described it, and I think you described it, was like sci-fi light, mm -hmm. which really appealed to me. Because yes. I like some fantasy, but I'm definitely not like a heavy sci-fi person. Sure. But... Um, this is the one where the implant is put into your head mm -hmm. to kind of help you like with a concentration, brain a mm -hmm. brain booster. And um, I can see this happening. And I can also see some of the repercussions that are discussed in the book mm -hmm. happening where it becomes a societal dividing point and it divides families against one another. And I can just see helicopter parents like saying, mm -hmm. oh, you have to get this pilot because it will help you do better on the SAT, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely, <laughs> or, or, or give you a leg up on some kind of mm -hmm. job or something else. So, yeah, I thought it was really fascinating. And I have also given this several rides home in my, <laughs> my back, book bag, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah. And I even recommended it to my son because I thought he would like it, but I have not read it yet. Yeah. So. Nice. There you go. I think you will like it when you get there. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things about science fiction is how just adding that little element that is not of our current situation can illuminate things that are actually currently going on in right. our society. Yeah. So I find that fascinating. And supposedly this author does a really good job of that. Yes. She has another book that... Oh. Um, People were talking about reviews that mm -hmm. sounded good. I'll have to give you the name of that Yes, one. please, so I can add it to my to-be-read list. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my book that Claire talked about that I immediately added to my list was Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Uh, you actually discussed this in our second ever book break episode. Oh, wow. Uh, a long time ago. <laughs> And I put it on my list. Uh, sounds great. So this is um, the one who there's like a, a nanny right. with a toddler and there's an incident that gets filmed yes. and goes viral. Yes. It's a, it's a, a, a young woman of color who mm -hmm. is watching a white child and right. has an incident filmed in a convenience store because the parents are having an argument and they asked her to take the child out of the house. Father or mother, one of them is a newscaster. So, mm. oh yes, the whole thing has repercussions. That would you should put that on the list for Pines and Pros. They, I feel like I may have. Yeah, I'll have to go back and check. Yeah, yeah, good discussion book. Yeah, I oh, there's definitely a lot mm -hmm. of lot of meat for discussion in okay. that one. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so then our our last bonus round is. What is the book that has been on your TBR for the longest? Right. Claire, what you got? And I will start with The Alchemist. I'm trying to... I, maybe I thought I was trying to better myself. This is Paulo Coelho. Um, this is a book that you will see on, on the internet that's like, this book changed my yeah, life. Yeah, so many people's so many favorite people book. So many people love this book. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a tale about discovering your destiny mm. and, and never losing faith. And I don't really know whether I am just too jaded <laughs> at this point in my life to say, oh, yeah, destiny. I love it. You know, finding my path and whatever. But anyway, the main character is a shepherd named Santiago who sets out to discover his own personal legend by looking for some sort of treasure is what <laughs> I believe. Um Yes. So many people have been deeply affected by this book. The question is, since it's been on my to-be-read list in 2012, will I? Will I ever be affected by this Ten book? Ten years. Let's take bets right now. Um, yeah. so. Or will it get pruned in the next round? No. Uh, so mine is even slightly more shameful because it has been on my TBR since February of 2008. And that is uh, The Mask of the Black Tulip by Lauren Willig. This is book two in a series. Uh, the Secret History of the Pink Carnation is the first book, right. which I talked about in book Yes, break, I remember Because that. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so this one has been sitting on my list for 12 years. No, nice. 14 years. Yeah. 14 years. Um, Will this be the year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should check it out and take it on vacation with me or something. I, they are good uh, vacation books. Maybe yes. I'll force myself to read it for our for vacation our reads episode. Yeah. Sounds good. 2008. It's bad. Yeah. Well, I've had this book on my to-be-read list almost as long as I've worked here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh I hope that we have made you feel a little bit better about the books that are sitting on your nightstand yes. or in your TBR. And by all means, share your own personal stack Please of shame do. because we want to feel good about ourselves. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, we're all in this together and we say shameful, but like there are so many books right. and there is so little time. Yeah. Like you've got to make decisions here and there. Yeah, And maybe if so, they suggest a book, we'll add it to our, our pile. Oh, Almost and certainly. And display some of our own. I have a question. <clears throat> Sean has a question. What keeps, what bumps a book out of your TBR? You know, what, what mm -hmm. makes you skip over that when, when you decide to read something? Oh, that's a great question. So I'm just going to repeat it in case yeah. the audio didn't come through well. Mm -hmm. So Sean's asking us, um, what makes you choose a book or skip over a book when you're looking for your next read? Yeah. Why not go to what? something that you is well established in your TBR? Because there's always the shiny and new, and <sighs> I am like a gnat that's chasing after the shiny and new. Yeah. Yeah. So that's certainly part of it. Um, I think now that we're doing book break, I Claire talks about a lot of books that I want to read, but I feel like I need to prioritize books that we haven't discussed already. Right. So I tend to skip those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hence this one um and then a lot of mine too is what's on the shelf right now mm -hmm. or what's available in Libby um I rarely put a book on hold anymore because I am in the library almost every day um so I will like pull up Goodreads and pull up the catalog and like just look for something that's on the shelf right now and go out and grab yeah. it I also do two book groups, so mm -hmm. sometimes the books I want to read, I have to yeah. bump because of what I have to read. Yes. But I am kind of tricky, and then I do put a lot of the things I want to read on my selection list for my book group, so yeah. It's There's one that. of the perks of being the moderator. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I, I have to say my thing is the shiny and new, mm -hmm. or, or I also review things on NetGalley right. that are future publications. So when I see an author I really like, it's like, ooh, you know, and I can be first, you know, to review. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll bump for those too. Yeah. And plus, I feel like I have to read some to keep that membership or whatever on, right. you know, ongoing. Right. So. And that's one of the reasons why I have not signed up for NetGalley because yeah. I don't need that pressure in my yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on the pressure. I can't. Love I it. Can't. I can't. Um, yeah, so we would love to hear from you all about what's in your TBR, uh, how you choose what you read next. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great discussion point. Yes, definitely. Um, 
if there are books in our list that we've talked about today that you've read and you think we should bump up to the top of the queue, let us know that. That's right. Um, we always need more votes. Yeah, absolutely. We want your thoughts. We want to know what you're thinking. Tell us. Yes, please. Share with us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. We hope you have enjoyed this as much as we have. Um, and we will be back in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone.